Thank you. Well, before you make that call, stay put, because we're going to talk about boxing. Kelsey Banks is the most experienced member of this year's American Olympic boxing team. He's fought in more than 500 bouts, but he's just as well known for his gift of gab. Once when a translator at one of Kelsey's fights found out that he'd been assigned to the American, he yelled, no bank, no bank. Well, we're now going to spend a moment with Kelsey Banks. <laughs> Gulfport, Mississippi is like a lot of other small towns. When the local residents need to catch up on some town news and gossip, they head to Nichols Barbershop, where Aaron cuts hair and keeps track of Gulfport. What's happening, Aaron? Hey, Kelsey, how you doing? Hard work, hard work, yeah. Still bumming heads with the cubits. Yeah, I see. <laughs> What's up, Chris? What's up, man? Hey, when the Olympics, man? Late September, early October. My chances now are much better than the war in 84. Gulfport wasn't always home for Kelsey Banks. His life began in Chicago, but after the courts gave his father custody, things began to change. Well, I kind of thought about it. Um, I figured it was going to be a little harder on me, and then, you know, I have to have somebody to look after him, and I didn't know what, you know, to raise him. And that's when I decided, you know, to let my mother keep him and adopt him. I didn't have no problem with him, but after I let, assured him that if he didn't do his work, he wasn't going to be boxing. I told him, you know, if he didn't get his uh, lesson out, he was going to have to cut the boxing loose. So Kelsey was raised by his grandmother, and Gulfport became his home. Now, let me see if Aaron's still cutting this thing. <laughs> let me see if he's still cutting this thing. Oh, yeah, that's just right there. Just right there. That's me. On this day, after making sure his hair was cut just so, Kelsey hooked up with his friend Chris Jackson. Chris is a high school basketball star, and Kelsey, of course, an Olympic boxer. Together, they stop traffic. These faces look familiar. Everyone applauds me, and first thing he says, uh, I saw you on TV, you know? That's a good feeling. And it lets you know that people are aware of your success, your accomplishments, and, and even furthermore, it pushes me to strive for bigger and better things. You start getting all these great ideas, he said, I'm ready to turn professional. And everybody else is saying, why don't you wait for the Olympics? I need money. I love money. Everybody loves money. But it's just this one particular thing that <clears throat> you only get a shot at maybe once in life. And some people never get that shot. And it's something that will always be there, you know, to say, hey, I had a, a son. You know, he competed in the Olympics. Or he won. Or he almost won. I mean, you know, it's, it's just the magnitude of this thing, you know. If Kelsey stopped boxing now, he'd still be the big man in town. And whether Kelsey wins it all in Korea or not, when he comes back to Gulfport, he's home. Hey, how's your daddy doing? All fine. Yeah, it's cool. You good throwing him? You don't got to take care of business, Jack. Eh? <laughs> all right, man, I see. I you, all right, that'll work. Check, man. <laughs> All right, the story of Kelsey Banks. He fought earlier today, and so we will get to that fight in just a couple of minutes. We'll go out to Chomshill Students Gymnasium, where Ferdy Pacheco and Marv Albert will give us a call of that fight. We'll be back in just a moment. The flame burning late into the night here in Seoul. That flame atop the DLI building, the tallest building in Seoul. And a flame that is burning brightly for the United States. Kelsey Banks in featherweight boxing. He is ready to take on his... Uh, first match of this young tournament. For all of that action, we head to the Seoul Sports Complex, where uh, Marv Albert and Freddie Pacheco are standing by. This is the Chomshill Students Gymnasium, located at the Sports Complex, the home for Olympic boxing these next two weeks. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert, along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. And on the second evening of the boxing competition, the feature bout will include America's colorful featherweight, Kelsey Banks. And for the United States boxing team, it has certainly been a tumultuous journey to make it here to Seoul, South Korea, a journey that has earned them the nickname of Team Turmoil. Now, here are some of the incidents that have touched this 1988 Olympic uh, boxing squad. 
during the trials, three of the boxers, Lavelle Finger, Eric Griffin, William Guthrie, tested positive for drugs and were dropped from the trials. Colonel Donald Hull, the head of the U.S. Amateur Boxing Association, was suspended by the International Amateur Boxing Association for alleged financial improprieties and was denied a credential to the Olympics. Hull then denied any wrongdoing. And of most significance, career army man, a no-nonsense type of guy, Ken Adams, who had been named head coach, was suspended following a fight with an amateur boxing official. During the suspension, the more easygoing Tom Coulter was appointed head coach, which then angered Army coach Hank Johnson. Others felt that Johnson, who is black, could be the better choice over Coulter, who is white. In light of the team being predominantly black, but this became academic when Adam's suspension was overturned by an arbitrator, and now he is back. So that is the scenario going into the competition. Ferdy, what effect do you feel that the coach confusion will have on the boxers well boxing uh, is a highly individualistic sport some respond to discipline different there's a military faction here for the boxers or servicemen they like that military discipline others go along with it and yet others are highly individualistic such as Kelsey Banks he marches to his own drummer and the in the end when that bell rings it, the responsibility is on the fighter alone not the team and he's got to go out and perform for himself well the much uh, heralded uh, kelsey banks won the gold at the pan american games he was the national amateur featherweight uh, champion back in 1986 but still he has had his ups and downs last month in a dual meet against canada he was surprisingly knocked down by jamie pagadam but then came back to win on points now the criticism of kelsey has focused on his occasional lack of motivation i can see nothing stopping me but kelsey Banks stopping himself and that's with that lazy attitude when you step into the ring uh, not really a lazy attitude, but at times, you know, I get a little lazy inside the ring. And, but here, this is the last, this is the last go around, and I'm putting out all the stops. Different things will be occurring, and I'll be reacting in different ways. And there is Kelsey Banks, who says that his recent disappointing performances are due to a lack of activity and a loss of motivation. He made the Olympic team by virtue of a controversial win over the popular five-foot-four-inch Ed Hobson at the Olympic box off in Las Vegas. And he is going up against Rogelio Tior of Holland, 21 year old, born in Paramaribo, South America. Family moved to Rotterdam, Holland, where he's a year old. Tior, the fifth of 10 children. He has five brothers and four sisters. But what is most impressive about Tior is that he speaks five languages that is impressive considering he's so short Bertie will explain that at a later date <laughs> here are the introductions for Tior and Banks Ghaznabi of Pakistan. So step one for Kelsey Banks in his quest for a gold medal, making it back from a right shoulder injury. Usually tries to use his reach, looks to stay outside, but at the center of the ring, the feeling is if Kelsey is guided to the ropes, he'll be off his game. If he boxes and stays right at the center of the ring, it is his type of bout. And uh, to your is more of a boxer, which is to the advantage of Kelsey Banks. And he's incredibly shorter than Kelsey. Almost everybody is shorter than Kelsey. He's one of the tallest flyweights around. But uh, this is in the Hobson mode. Uh, gentleman, he fought before boxer. He fought before twice. Small guy gave him a lot of trouble. Kelsey Banks at uh, six feet which is a very tall featherweight, while Tior at five foot seven. Crowd really into this with Kelsey Banks, chanting, his teammates chanting all the way as he came in and the crowd picked it up. Banks in the blue trunks, Tior in the white. Reviewing the amateur rules, the scoring handled by five judges, 
winner of each round awarded 20 points in a close round. The loser gets 19 points, and that was a caution for talking in the corner of uh, Pior. In the amateur uh, boxing competition, the uh, coaches cannot talk to the boxer. Now the judges' yardstick, three effective scoring blows equals one point of the scoring. And a scoring punch means a punch from the white portion of the glove must make contact. Kelsey showing a lot of defensive moves in that corner. It went one way and then went the other and left um, to yours swinging in midair. Defense, offense, ring generalship really doesn't mean anything except as a tiebreaker. What counts here is effective punching. concern is for Kelsey he has not come to yet I, I didn't think the punch was that hard but his head hit this canvas extremely hard and that possibly was a blow because the blow let's look at it closely right there to the now watch the head hit he's dead weight and he hits dead weight in and that's what's knocked him out this much they're doing a eye examination to see uh, how he's responding. He still has not responded well. This guy hasn't moved. He has not spoken yet, nor come to. That was a very, very strong punch, but the stronger punch was when his head uh, hit this canvas, which is padded, but it's uh, even with that slight headgear. I will take another look at the replay and uh, keep an eye on the neck of Kelsey Banks as he took the uh, the shot. Uh, he's out on the way down. He's dead weight on the way down, as we said. And of course, um, we can't belabor we can't belabor the uh, the idea that hitting the canvas uh, has caused him to to be so roundly unconscious. He was unconscious going down, but that type of blow to the head is what makes the boxer not come to. He has not come to yet. He should have established an adequate airway, which they have not so far. They're starting to put it in. First movement from Kelsey. His, his hand came up. At least he's moving in himself. Now, now he's responding to, to verbal instructions. They're talking to him. He's nodding. So he's at least understanding what they're saying. And he's moving. He's moved his arm. That's good news. And he's responding. He understands the verbal command. And he's responding to it. He's moving his fingers down his right hand. He's moved his left hand. These are scary moments. And Virgilio Tior made an effort to come over to check it out. He's got it aside. And uh, Kelsey now hearing it from the crowd. Oh, difficult moment there, Marv. Difficult moment. And the stretcher is in the... Uh, in the ring now and the paramedics are here the doctor's still working on them would be very very wise to let him take that time before he moves out of here under his own power he appears to be all right stretcher is not needed great show of olympic sportsmanship as his opponent comes over to talk to him And the American boxing contingent looking on, and they are stunned at what they saw. You uh, may recall just moments ago, we showed you uh, the video of his appearance in that dual meet against Canada, and Jenny Pagadam surprised by putting Kelsey Banks to the canvas, but then Banks got back to his feet, rallied, and won by decision. But in this instant, he is taken out late in round one. 
So Kelsey Banks, who has had more than his share of disappointments uh, since winning the gold of the Pan Am Games, uh, since taking honors as uh, the national featherweight the champion back in 1986, is stopped in round number one of his Olympic debut. But uh, the good news is, despite uh, taking that shot, he is all right.